All right, so let's begin with the navigation and the interface. Uh, first of all, just let me say, do not worry if your color combination looks different. I do have a custom uh, setup here for the colors, but I am going to explain that in the next video, how you can do that on your own. And the second thing we are working in the workspace, workspace called Maya Classic. So if you're in Maya Standard, you can switch to Maya Classic just because we do then have the same uh, tabs organization like you see here on the screen. So uh, navigation first, uh, in combination with alt and left click, you will get rotation, alt and mid mouse, you will get move and alt and right click, you will have panning. So basically that is all there is. And middle mouse wheel can give you the same type of panning as well. So this is the basics of navigation. Now let's go into the interface. So on the left side, you have your uh, transformation and selection tools. If you hover on any of those, you will see what they are. So from selection tools to move, rotate and scales. Um, you can also use hotkeys. Now I believe that by default you have W for move, E for rotation and, and R for scale. I do have my own custom setup where that is a bit different. For me, R is a rotation, move is E, and then scale is T. It's just easier with R for rotation, kind of makes more sense, at least to me. So uh, let's go into this tabs right here. So basically the four icons just means that you can switch to four view, two icons means that you can switch to two views, and this one icon is just your one uh, default view. This icon right here gives you outliner. Basically, it's sort of like a layer manager. So whatever is in the scene, it's going to be stacked here as well. Uh, the second thing I want to cover is this top bar right here, and it's connected to this modeling. And if it's changed to rigging or animation, you will see some of the uh, text, actually some of the parts of the menu will change as well. So for now, we're going to keep it to modeling. Then you have the second menu, which we're gonna cover just in a sec. This third menu is called a shelf, and basically there you will find most used, let's say, uh, primitives or combinations of operations tied to poly modeling. Same thing, it will go for sculpting, rendering, and so on. Now shelves, you can customize. So if you, something that you don't like, you can delete. And you can also create your own custom shelves based on the operation that you like to use the most. So just as a quick example, I just want to show that some operations that are found here, you can find right here on the right side as well, but you can also find it here on the edit mesh. So as you can see here is extrude, here is extrude, and then here is extrude. There's a couple of more, but we're going to cover that just in a sec. So if, for example, you would like to have, let's say, a new custom shelf, you need to come here. So there's new shelf, delete shelf, and so on. Shelf editor basically will give you the option to just to play around with it a bit more to, let's say, um, modify custom shelves, uh, delete, uh, rearrange, create new ones, basically the same thing that you can do here. So new shelf, and I'll just call it, let's say N, and then you will get to your empty shell here. And then you can just go to shift and control. And let's say you like using bevel, bridge, circularize, extrude, merge, flip, whatever you like, you will just put here by holding shift and control via these menus here. And if there's something extra you don't like, you simply can delete it. And if you don't need a shelf anymore, you can just delete the complete shelf. So basically that's concerning the shelves. Now on the right side, uh, what we have here is our selection. And I'm gonna talk about that in a sec. And then we have some operation that are tied to quite uh, often, let's say often more, more or less use operations. And again, same like extrude, bevel. It just depends what your natural instincts or natural workflow asks. So if you like to go here or here, it just depends. Now the other tabs will become active once you have something here in the scene. So if depending on what you have, the tabs will change. So uh, same thing with the attribute manager. For now it's empty, depending what you have here, it will change and give you some options. Uh, here again, it's just a time slider. 
Uh, Mel is my embedded language where you can do some scripting. Same with Python. If you click on it, we'll change Python. Uh, then here you have, uh, it says displays the command response. Well, uh, I don't know how to explain. So for example, you have something here in the viewport. Uh, it's not working for some reason. And then you see a red field and it will say, for example, multiple edges need to be selected or something like that. It's going to be displayed here. Now at the very, very bottom, you will see it says under the mail. As I change here, you will see it will give you small descriptions of whatever I'm currently hovering. So it's right, left. It's right uh, on the down left side, uh, bottom side left. So that's what I'm trying to say. So whatever you're trying to hover or see what it means, it will tell you down. So for example, I'm hovering here over bevel and then bottom left side, it will say bevel components, create a bevel along the selected edges of faces. So that's basically that there is two interface and the general navigation. So uh, let's now create a cube and see how we can add stuff to the scene and what else we can do. Uh, you can come here, create a polygon cube. You can go to create polygon primitives and you can also do space, create polygon primitives cube. So basically when you hit space, you will get exactly the same menu that you have here plus some additions. You have this Maya in the middle, which will give you perspective view, new camera, right view, bottom view. So basically whatever you have here, but if you hit space once, it will give you this same view as before. And whatever your mouse clicks or just hovers, you sp hit space bar again, and that's how you can quickly switch between the views. So I was talking about creating the cube. So this is one way, this is second, and this is third. And the fourth way is via marking menus. And to access marking menus, you will just right click or shift right click, depending on what we're doing. That's still more operations. For now, we're going to focus on the two. So in this case, let's just shift right click and create a cube. So now we can just hit here for scale, rotate or move, and then adjust our cube. Uh, by any chance, maybe, just maybe you have this active and if you click on the cube, you get this little pop-up, which will just mean you will need to create your cube like this. So if you do not want that, you can come here to create polygon primitives, interactive creation check off or shift control interactive creation uncheck this box. And then you will just shift control and I'm sorry, I'm talking you wrong. It's shift and right click cube, and then it will scale it. So uh, this is one part of the marking menu. So control, actually right click, I don't know why I'm saying control. So it's right click and shift right click. So for now, we're gonna focus on these two. Uh, so uh, one more time, we use shift right click to create a cube we can adjust it and if we now right click on the cube we will get access to edges vertices faces and multi for now i'm going to focus on these let's ignore uvs and let's ignore vertex face it's basically the same thing as you would have here selecting points edges or uh, faces and multi-component will just select anything that your mouse is closest to. So if it's closest to the point, it will select the point, edge, or face. Same thing, it will be on right-click, face, vertex, edge, or multi. So this is now our marking menu, and we should get very, very familiar with that because it is going to help us um, with a workflow and we're going to be much faster than just coming here each time and selecting specific operation. Uh, okay, so now depending on the mode where are you in. So if you're in vertex mode, also kind of found here on the right click and shift right click will give you now marking menu operation based on the mode you're in. So if I'm now in point mode, I will get point mode operations based on points. If I switch to edge and shift right click, I will now be in the menus connected to the edge. So edit edge flow and bridge hole, everything that is connected and that we can do with edges. And if I switch to right click face, 
click on a face and then shift right click i will get a lot of operations based on that face and again here we have extrude like here and like here and like here so basically what this allows you is just to find a balanced workflow that fits you and that you find yourself comfortable within that workflow so if you prefer marking menus if you prefer this side this side or searching here in the menu it just all depends how you wish to work so for now now we know right click we know shift right click but there's also shift control right click which will give you access to symmetry same thing that we have symmetry here and we have symmetry here so it will again just depend what access you prefer so shift control right click will also give you access to camera based selection for example which is found right here as well so again just whatever you prefer so we have right click we have shift right click and then we have shift control right click and also we have control right click which actually i need to select and then that will just enable you for example to select uh, now we have selected uh, face but we can also select that face and convert it into vertices so we have quite a bit marking menus to cover but as we work we're going to get more familiar with uh, with those as well all right so um, now that we have this as basic i just want to mention one other uh, tool that we're going to cover here and this is like scale settings or rotation or move settings let's just go into rotation because it's going to have more sense so let's now try and rotate this and you will see that we're going to rotate this without any restrictions if by any chance if actually we go to snap step and set this to relative and you will see that number 45 is at the side simply means that now we can rotate within 45 degree intervals we can change that to something like 15 and then we'll have 15 uh, percentage intervals for our rotation now the thing is that if you set this as a default every time when you wish to rotate you will rotate like this so you can also turn it off to get access to your regular rotation or you can hold J and then you will get access to that relative. So you'll see that on some, once I'm hitting J, this will change. So once I hold, I'm gonna have this rotation. Same thing works if you reverse it. So this is by default with J, we're gonna have a much more smooth rotation. So the same thing will work if we now scale this up and we decide to change this also let's say to some percentage you will see that now it will snap to that uh, interval but this is only if, if it's really really necessary all right uh, let's talk about one other uh, thing here so uh, marking menus so as for marking menus you do not actually need to aim so right click or shift right click so let's say I need a cube. I don't actually need to shift right click and wait until this appears to select a cube. What I can do is just shift right click and quickly move it down to create a cube. So this is something that is going to take time, but the more you work, it's going to be more familiar. And same thing is going to be for faces, vertices or edges. You just need to practically aim where you think this is, uh, the operation is, and then you will get much faster to uh, the selection point uh, one more menu to cover is for example if I wish to extrude it's going to be this little menu right here so I'm going to increase the size and you can increase the size here on this little icon and I'm making it this big so that you can see this icon at the very top now the smallest part of the circle is selected if you double click on it multiple times the majority of the circle will be selected and if you click on it actually right click it will give you options slowest slow medium and fast what that simply means is that currently set to fast and you will see that mouse sensitivity is pretty high and if i right click to slowest or just come back from here with clicking this is now the slowest you will see that mouse sensitivity is really low 
And if I go to medium, for example, which should be kind of golden middle, you can also hold control to make it even more smooth. So for now, you can see that this is a medium, but at the moment I hit control, it's going to give us a bit more control over uh, how much thickness we are adding. So if we need a bit more precise result. So again, just something to, to keep in mind. All right, so I'm going to delete also this cube and uh, one piece that we still need to talk about. So there's one, one operation which is called history and it's called construction history on and off. So basically what this does and in many situations you want to have it on. Uh, what basically does it records everything that you're going to do in your viewport depending on an object. So for example, if I come here, you will see polycube. If I now come and select the face and decide to extrude this, and in Maya there is operation G. So if you hit G on your keyboard, it will just repeat the last operation. So now I have twice the extrusion. If I go to history, you will see here, I have twice the extrusion. So what history does, it will basically record whatever you did on that object and give you opportunity to come back into attribute editor, what we talked before, and to adjust some of the settings. So you can adjust, let's say the divisions. And let me try, it will not always work, but let me try here to adjust the divisions in our second. And let me also come here to the polycube and maybe adjust the size. So basically history will record every operation that you do and depending on how much of a history you have, because the more stuff you do, I will just add more and more, the longer the list and the longer the list, the viewport might become a bit laggy. And if you go to channel box, you will see here, this is your history. So basically you can also click here and added those values. So uh, the longer this list becomes, and uh, this list as well, uh, viewport will become laggy. And if you notice that, for example, it is becoming a bit, let's say not as you used to, you will need to delete the history. And to delete it, you will need to go to edit, delete all by type or by type. So delete by type will just delete the history on a currently selected object, while delete all by type will delete, delete the history with uh, from all the objects in the scene. So for now I can just delete all history and we'll see that this will now disappear. And now we don't have any more that option to come back into any of the operations from before to adjust parameters. So basically this also is something what history means. Sometimes uh, if you're working with the formers and if you're playing with the lattice or bend the former if you're bending, and delete the history, you will not have the opportunity to adjust, let's say, the bend uh, settings. And one final thing that I would like to mention, so maybe we can add one cube. So here we have our general translation and scale uh, rotation uh, parameters. Uh, I would like to go into attribute manager and also here you will see that you will have the same settings where you can play. And the same thing goes here. Uh, so for example, let me just push this a bit down. And if you hold control in this uh, little window, you can make this again a bit more subtle so it won't be so strong. So just with the control, you can manipulate this a bit better. Uh, shading group and the material. So material is going to be here and you can also access it by right click material attributes and you will get this little window and also one thing let me just click on the cube polycube one and then you have p cube shape one and inside one thing that i would like to just mention is a smooth mesh which basically will uh, give you the smooth mesh preview and preview you can also access with number three on your keyboard. So three is going to give you smooth mesh preview. And if you hit one, it will just uh, switch between those two. So one and three are he here important uh, hotkeys. If you hit three, you will have an option here 
it's called preview the uh, division level which you can increase or decrease the same thing if you hit page up or page down on your keyboard it will do the same one of the uh, things that I would like to mention here and if I now let's say clone this and just push this up is you have a couple of others. So one, as we can notice, is a smooth mesh preview with three a smooth mesh preview on. And if you hit two, it will give you a preview with the cage. If you hit four, you will get wireframe, which uh, will show right here as well. So this is also your wireframe. And if you hit five, it will be shaded display. Six will be shaded display with textures and then seven will be with the lights turned on. So basically it's the same thing as here up. One other thing is that we have here is ambient inclusion. And one other useful thing is X-ray. This is also something that we're gonna use quite often. So I believe that with this, I covered most of the uh, most commonly used operation and what we're going to do now is just continue as we work we're going to introduce multiple tools and get a bit more familiar with what each tool does but for now i just wanted to make sure that we are familiar with the general interface and that we know where stuff are and that actually in maya one thing might be here so symmetry symmetry and symmetry so it can be found in multiple places so uh, let's close this video and i'm going to meet you in the next one where we talk about customizing our interface and making it look uh, a bit more friendly to our workflow and what we want to do so see you in the next video